In this video, we're going to talk about quantities of acoustic treatment. By the end, you'll know how much you need and why. My name is Michael Carrillo, aka Hex Spa. Welcome to my channel. If you're new, click subscribe. I make original music and music making tutorials. So when determining how much acoustic treatment you need, you need to determine what your needs are themselves. If, for example, you're in a large space and you just want to improve speech intelligibility, say it's a bar or a gymnasium, you can use two inch thick rigid panels and uh, install them in a checkerboard pattern. These are rigid panels, these are four inch thick, and the reason why they're thicker than two inches is because I do music. You see, acoustic treatment works over the audible range of frequencies, and for intelligibility, those frequencies tend to be in the higher range. For example, if I talk into my hands like this, I am primarily removing the higher frequencies from the audio path. The microphone isn't gonna hear them because they're getting blocked and absorbed by my hands. So when you're in a space that has a lot of just ambient noise and it's bouncing all over the place, it's similar to your hands in that all that sound builds up and creates a sort of cloud, also known as masking and that prevents speech from being very clear. So if you're in a, a bar or a, again a gymnasium, you want to improve intelligibility, two inch rigid panels in a checkerboard pattern should be all you need. Now if you're in a home studio, your needs are different, again like I mentioned because there's bass involved. If you're in a dance studio, you might want to improve the ringingness of the bass if it's very boomy or whatever, you can definitely install thicker treatment but I want to focus on the home studio owner since that's what I am myself. You have a few different types of treatment. You'll probably be familiar with bass traps, but you might not be as familiar with a reflection free zone. But you need both of these when determining how much treatment you need. And you also need a target. I've talked about this in another video, but your acoustic target for your listening position should be 20 decibels of decay within 150 milliseconds above 63 hertz or so. And how do you achieve that? Well, obviously acoustic treatment. And then how much you need is gonna depend on your room size and what your room is made of. Harder materials are gonna keep the sound inside longer, as opposed to like thin drywall where the sound is just gonna leak right out and that's gonna actually help you, not your neighbors, but it'll help you in terms of achieving a shorter decay. So I like to separate base treatments from reflection treatments, although they, there is some overlap. So I have nine super chunks, two feet high in my room. These are two super chunks stacked on top of one another. And how I made them was I took 24 inch insulation, cut it in half and then stacked it until I got to four foot heights and then just doubled them. So these things are what I consider to be like rooks on a chessboard. They're extremely powerful for absorbing bass, but they're huge and you're probably not gonna use them for early reflections. Rigid panels tend to be better for that just because they take up less space. You can use four inch thickness. Again, I mentioned you can go up to eight inch thickness with rigid. If not, you end up with problems, but you wanna use these to create the reflection free zone. This isn't so much for your decay target, but it's more for your clarity and stereo image. So you can think of a reflection free zone like a womb or cocoon. You have the initial impulse from your speaker and that gets to you, but that sound also bounces off every other surface in your space and all those reflections get to you too. And if you know or you don't, within 10 milliseconds, everything just kind of sounds like one sound. If you were to play a clap, a very sharp clap impulse and put them within 10 milliseconds of each other, they would just sound sort of like a louder, bigger clap. But after 10 milliseconds, they start to separate. So
So you need to create a reflection free zone in addition to handling your base ranges. Now I talked about overlap and that's because it's all absorption in the end. I have more treatment on my side walls than I do along my length at the end caps of the length because I have more trouble with these frequencies bunching up at my listing position. And I'll talk about analyzing your room and you know balancing your treatment in another video. It's kind of complicated and you want to go at a case by case basis. But suffice it to say, in addition to using panels for a reflection free zone and just for base, you can use your reflection panels as modal treatment and then add more as you need. And you can use pink fluffy above eight inches, just the same way that you would the rigid panels and then tune your room from there. But essentially you wanna get at least a lot of treatment in your corners. It can be pink fluffy or it can be rigid panels. You've seen them angled. That's up to you and how much floor space you wanna sacrifice, how much money you got and how practical it is if there's like a door or something like in my case, I've got my super trunks in front of my door, but you know, I'm careful with fires. Um, so in summary, your needs are gonna determine how much treatment you need. And if you just want intelligibility, go with two inch panels and a checkerboard pattern. But if you're a home studio owner, you need to establish decay targets. Like I said, I like to use 20 decibels within 150 milliseconds above 63 hertz. But there's, if, there's at least 10 different standards out there. So pick one which we, you feel comfortable with. Create the reflection free zone in addition to treating your base. And if you wanna really dial things in, you can add more treatment along your various surfaces based on the results you're getting from an actual acoustic measurement. Rule of thumbs are helpful, but ultimately to determine how much treatment you need in a home studio, you have to take a measurement and go frequency by frequency and determine if you're meeting your targets or not, okay? I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment if you have any other questions. I know that this can be a confusing topic. I might have left some things out or not explained them in the way that gets through to your particular case, but I'm more than happy to help. So go ahead and leave a comment there. And once again, click subscribe. You can go to hexpa.com, get my music for free. So thanks for watching. Peace.